everyone and welcome to Friday. I'm Shannon and I'm a naturalist here at Ramsey County's Tamarack Nature Center. Hopefully you got a chance to watch our video earlier this week that invited you to come on out to the Nature Center and find a few spots here along our trails where we have plenty of wildflowers growing. Well today I would like to invite you to play a game of where in the world is the naturalist as we hop around to some different spots here that hopefully you found, and we will identify all of the wildflowers at each station. Can anybody tell where I am right now? That's right, I'm out in the marsh, and I don't recommend this because you will get wet, but we wanted to show you the marsh marigolds. All of these yellow flowers and all the ones behind me are marsh marigold. You can see that on the plants, some of them are blooming and there are still some buds. So these should be blooming for a while yet. You can get here by following the boardwalk to the left of post 16 where we started. Can anyone tell where I am now? Well, if you take a right from post 16 and head down towards our floating dock, you will be on our other boardwalk. But I have another question for you. What's green and has no petals? A flower, Jack in the pulpit flowers, right here in front of me. Here's one that hasn't quite bloomed. It hasn't emerged. And here's one that has. Um, it looks kind of like a calla lily, if you're familiar with those. And inside, see, there's Jack right there. This one is really, really small. We'll mark this one for you, so if you want to come out later and look for it, you'll be able to find it. I bet you can't tell where I am now. I'm actually at the very beginning of the boardwalk that goes down to the floating dock at the lake. So I'm off the edge of the trail here in the woods. This is the edge of our sugar bush. If you look around, you'll actually be able to see a whole bunch of maple trees. But here down on the forest floor, I have three plants that I would like to show you. This first one is actually in bloom, this little white flower here. This is our wood anemone, and it is one of the spring ephemerals. So while it is in bloom right now, it's not gonna be in bloom for long. So hopefully you can get down here before it finishes blooming. So this is our wood anemone. It's all these little green leaves. They kind of look like a little mitten sort of uh, on the ground here. And right next to it, this is our wild geranium. It is not blooming right now. It will be blooming soon, hopefully. It's a little purplish flower, five petals, and there's a whole patch of it here and it's spread all along the trail here, right up to the dock. So when it's blooming and you get down here, you won't be able to miss it. You'll see it everywhere, little purple flowers. The third plant is not a wild flower, but we have a lot of it here in our woods and it is just coming up this time of year. It's this little fern right here. It's pretty hard to see. It doesn't really look like a fern right now because the leaves haven't unfurled all the way. But in the spring, we actually call them fiddleheads because when they first pop up, they're about this tall and they're all rolled up really tight and it looks like the end of a fiddle. They're actually edible. They're really good. And because these guys don't have a flower, they also don't have seeds because that's after all the purpose of a flower is to produce a seed. But since ferns don't flower, Instead, they produce spores. Anyone know what a spore is? It's those same things that mushrooms use to spread. So when this fern unfurls all the way, it's going to produce spores in one of two ways, depending on what kind of fern it is. Sometimes the ferns will uh, have little dots on the underside of their leaves that are full of spores, and sometimes they will send up a separate stock that has a bunch of spores on it. So look for ferns on the forest floor too, we have a lot of them here at Tamarack and they should be pretty easy to find. And I'm still in the sugar bush. So to get to this spot, when you're at post 16, just take a right and come down the little, well, it's supposed to be wood chipped. It's not really, it's kind of dirt path into our sugar bush. And you will see this lovely flower here. Hopefully you'll see it. It's a violet, really? You're saying to me right now, it's not violet, it's yellow. Well, yeah, there are yellow violets. Aren't they pretty? I love them. They're all along this path here and they're just as pretty as the purple violets and I love them just as much. So come on down here and check them out. 
Where am I now? You guessed it, still in the sugar bush. Here we have something called Solomon seal. Not to be confused with false Solomon seal. There's a lot of tricky wildflower things like that. It's easiest to tell the two apart when they're in flower because false Solomon seal flowers at the end. Solomon seal flowers kind of in between the leaves here all down the stem. So the flower is really cute. It's a little white bell-shaped flower that dangles down upside down along the stem here. The interesting thing about upside down flowers is the challenge that they kind of pose to the pollinators. If you have an upright flower where they can sit, it's super easy for them just to land. But when the flower is upside down, they have to kind of dangle and hold on to make sure that they don't fall out. So Solomon seal is a little bit tricky for our pollinators, but they still manage to do it because we have plenty of Solomon seal here in the sugar bush. As we walk down the Sugarbush Trail, you see nice open woodlands here, and I have next to me a trillium. Trillium, tri meaning three, that's how many leaves it has. Currently it is not in bloom. It is another one of our spring ephemerals, so once it starts blooming, not gonna be here for long. Now, mostly you hear the thing, leaves of three, let it be. Well, I mean, you should let it be because we want it to keep growing here, but don't get it confused with poison ivy. It's one set of three leaves on a long stalk. When it flowers, it's going to be a little white three-petaled flower that's going to come right out the top there and dangle down. So the, the trillium, is it's all along this trail here, um, so you'll be able to see a lot of it if you get down here. It's just, it's kind of spread out, so keep your eyes peeled. Can you find me now? Yep, I'm still in the sugar bush. I have continued down that woodland path and we are now along the path that starts to kind of parallel the lake and I have found a lovely purple flower. You may remember me saying that the wild geranium was purple, but this is not wild geranium. It is a different purple flower. It has six petals. Wild geranium only has five. This is called false rue anemone. It also is a spring ephemeral does not bloom for very long. So get on out here and quick and see if you can find it. Our sugar bush has so many flowers. We were very excited to find this one here. It is bellwort. It has this beautiful little bell-shaped flower that just kind of dangles from the leaves and they're quite lovely. This one is sort of pale. I'm used to seeing them a much brighter yellow, but it's still very nice. We're off the trail just a little bit. This one might be a little bit harder to find, but the next flower we're gonna look at is right behind me. There is a lovely patch of spring beauty, much closer to the trail. So here is our patch of spring beauty. It's this beautiful little pink flower. And when you get here, take a very close look. There's something very, well, there's a couple of very interesting things about this flower. Actually, if you come here early in the morning, it might not be opened up. You'll just see a bunch of closed little flowers because it opens up during the day. And then take a close look at the open flowers. You'll see a bunch of little lines that run lengthwise down the petals that kind of point to the center of the flower. These little lines are followed by the pollinators. So when the pollinators come <clears throat> and they're looking for the nectar and the pollen, they actually follow the line, say, hey, here's the nectar. And they just sort of scoop down the flowers down to where they need to be. So check those out. You can actually see them. Some flowers have these lines, but they're only visible to bug vision. So we can't see them. But on the Spring Beauty, we can actually see them. Hopefully it's still blooming when you're here. This has already been blooming for about two weeks, which is a long time. So I hope you get to see this one. We have reached the end of our wildflower trail. Do you remember me talking about the ferns? We found some bigger ones. These ferns are kind of cool. They're already big enough to have started creating their spores. And it's these weird little things that kind of look like leaves, but don't. And they're right there along the stalk in this particular species of fern. So you should be able to find the end of the trail pretty easily when you get to the ferns. We've run out of our wildflowers for today. Now some of you might be wondering, why are the wildflowers blooming now when 
it's still a little bit cold and not a whole lot else is growing. Well, flowers like sunlight, even woodland flowers like sunlight. And this time of year, the leaves aren't out on the trees yet. If you look up, there's not much there. And so the sunlight filters down through the lack of leaves and lights up the forest floor, warms things up, and creates really good growing conditions for these flowers. And that's why we find them now. And some of them will be blooming later throughout the spring, and you can see them for a while, but some of them disappear really quickly. So if you didn't get a chance to come on out earlier this week, we'd like to invite you to come out still. We will attempt to mark these spots so that you can find them easily. There will be a map out in front of the Nature Center building for you to check out the locations that we have been to today. And hopefully you can find your way back to these spots and check out all of the flowers. One thing we ask of you though, please, please do not pick the flowers. I know they're very beautiful and they would make a lovely bouquet and everyone really loves them, but they're a very important part of our habitat. They're very important for our pollinators and other people want to see them too. There really aren't that many of them. Actually, the best fun of a wildflower hike is the adventure of trying to find them. We made this video pretty quick, but you didn't see all the time that it took us to hike slowly along the trail and to see what we could see. If you walk too fast, you'll miss them. So make sure that you're walking slowly and you're taking your time and you can see all of these flowers for yourself. Stay tuned to our Facebook page because next week we're talking about birds.